Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here. All the students in the hall, stand up for me, please. All of the students. Well done. You, you are my heroes. If you were studying psychology, I'd give you all a high distinction just for turning up today in this dreadful weather. Well done. I, I'm Deb Turnbull. I'm one of the professors here at the University of Adelaide. And I'm going to give you a talk about the beautiful, beautiful discipline of psychology. I'm only going to give you a little overview because after me, one of my colleagues, Dr. Rachel Earle, is going to talk about the, the reality of being a psychology student and how it can be a really uh, motivating and energising discipline that takes you to a career not just here in Australia but also internationally. Psychology is a subject which helps you to understand yourself and others. And for that reason, it helps you to make a really positive impact, not just in relation to your own situation, but also the community more generally. And the really excellent thing about psychology is because it's a science and because it incorporates research methods, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we produce job-ready graduates. So a lot of our program has an emphasis on analytical skills and communication skills, and for that reason, employers really value our graduates. So it produces graduates, and Rachel's a marvellous example of this, who have got influence. Influence within the community and influence more generally. Now, a lot of you will know that psychology is a profession. There's going to be a lot of people here in the hall for today that know about psychology and know about clinical psychologists, know about health psychologists, know about organisational psychologists. But the other important thing is that psychology is a science. So our students are, are imbued in the, the basic scientific principles of a hypothesis uh, generating and a hypothesis testing. And then they're, in, they're taught basic experimental methods and survey methods. And for this reason, they come out with very sound scientific skills. And it's the scientific study of not just the mind and behaviour, which a lot of you will be familiar with, but it's also to do with how we interact with others and how we interact with the world. The important thing to realise is that psychology is, has got numerous pathways here at the University of Adelaide. Um, there are six or seven different pathways. Some of them are named degrees. And others are degrees where you take a major within a, a bachelor degree, say, in social science or science or commerce. And for that reason, psychology and, and its, fair, its related disciplines are really useful for those of you who are interested in a, a very wide range of occupations, not just professional psychology. Okay, so psychology, one of the really neat things about it is that it suits a broad range of people. Um, my students are very diverse in their backgrounds. They're very diverse in their personalities. I have students uh, who get up and who are very happy to share their, their interests and their views with a, a lecture theatre of seven or 800 students. Then I've got other students who would just die at that thought. They really prefer to work um, as independent people very in, in more isolated um, environments. So here's some questions for all the students in the audience. I want you to look at the questions on the screen and think about how you fit. For example, are you an analytical person? Are you an investigative person? Are you enterprising, for example? Um, what sorts of skills do you think you'd like to develop? Are you interested in developing your scientific and your critical thinking skills? Are you interested in, in improving on your written and your verbal communication skills? If you're interested in any of those things, then psychology is definitely something you should think about. And the other thing is, if you're interested in topics other than psychology, then by all means, think about psych as well. A lot of my students, they integrate their psych with subjects such as anthropology, such as politics, such as history and geography. So before I hand over to Rachel, I'm going to give you a pricey about what psychology um, graduates do and where they work and a little bit about their career pathways. 
So uh, what do they do? Well, there are a few things that you can see on this screen. The first thing is they do a lot of diverse different roles. Everything from working with the law, working with the police, to designing educational materials. So the roles are very broad. Similarly, if you look at where they work, they work in a very broad range of settings. They work in the government sphere, they work in the not-for-profit sphere, they work in the private sphere. And finally, let's have a look at this. The idea is that you, you look at this from the outside in. You try and place yourself in your career interests. So there are going to be some students in this audience who have really got social science interests. Okay? There are others who are going to be really motivated by, by medical and health and biological interests. And then there's going to be a group of students who are really motivated about maybe um, management or education. Now, all of those career interests lead to pathways into studying psychology. So they all come into the centre. They all can be combined within an undergraduate degree, which leads to the honours pathway. Okay. So that's my first take-home message. Psychology is dynamic. It's changing. It's got lots and lots of pathways in. So what exactly and how do you go about studying psychology? So psychology can be taken at each of the year levels across your undergraduate degree. And then to become a professional psychologist, you enter into the fourth year honours program. Okay, so it's three years plus one year for those who wish to progress with their psychology. After that, students have got one of three pathways. The first pathway is professional psychology careers. So these, these are designed for people who want to become clinical psychologists or health psychologists, so-called registered psychologists. For these students, they do the three years, the honours, then they do a master, and then when they're in the workplace, they do two years of supervised workplace practice. That's the first pathway. The second pathway is the research training pathway. So these are for students who want to enter a, a, a career in universities like this one. They want to work with government agencies, such as maybe the CSIRO, and they want to work with research organisations. For these students, the pathways would be a Doctor of Philosophy, so a three-year research intensive pathway, or another pathway where the student combines the PhD with professional training, a master program over a total of four years. The third pathway is for students who really wish to combine their psychology with other interests in other areas of the workforce. So these students would do uh, a degree such as a Bachelor of Social Sciences and they'd do a major in psychology and then maybe go forward and work in human resources, for example. So working in the, the general area of psychology but not as a registered psychologist. So now it gives me a lot of pleasure to introduce you to you to one of our recent graduates. And Rachel, Dr. Rachel Earle did the pathway at the bottom of the screen. So she did a, a PhD and a Master of Psychology um, clinical combined, which is a really um, exciting pathway which permits you to combine research and clinical practice. So please, um, with me, um, welcome Dr. Earle. Thanks, Deb. Um, hi, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, it was about 12 years ago that I was in, you know, in, your, in the seats of the prospective students. And um, I know kind of what an exciting and overwhelming time it can be to be grappling with what you might do, yet, do next. So today, I just want to give you a bit of a taste of what my pathway in psychology has been like and where I kind of... Um, prospect where, where my future might be going and hopefully to bring to life some of what Deb has talked about already today. So just to reiterate what Deb um, 
just said. So in 2011, um, I completed the combined degree, which is the PhD in clinical masters, and that was uh, four, four years full-time study for me. Um, so combining a full PhD and a coursework masters, which also included um, clinical placement, so working in different organisations um, and being supervised by a practising psychologist. So this qualification um, enables me to be a registered psychologist um, with a research qualification. And it's a relatively new program in Australia. So I guess as, as more and more cohorts are graduating from these programs, we're kind of, we're kind of learning what we can offer. And I guess from looking um, and observing my peers who have also come through the program, we've all taken really diverse pathways. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna give you a sense of what my pathway has looked at and to be honest, looked like. To be honest, I'm still like learning and discovering what I wanna do and what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, it's very much a journey. Um, certainly the idea of the combined degree is to bridge the gap between clinical psychology and research. Um, research often works to be developing you know, new interventions, new therapies, but sometimes it's hard to be communicating that um, to people who are actually practicing, um, who have different expertise to people in, in placed in research. So it's an idea to bring, bring the two areas of psychology together and I guess to improve the dialogue between them. So to get at my, um, to get me to this combined degree, I undertook the three years of um, undergrad and I also did one year of honours. So it's a very, very, as I said to some students this morning, it's a pretty hardcore program, to be honest. Like, you know, it's a lot of years of study and I guess, um, like, it's overwhelming to think about um, that much study and that kind of commitment. And I know for my parents, it was really overwhelming to think of me doing that much study. But I guess I want to show you today um, ways that I've complemented that study so that I have been able to get some workforce experience and I guess diversify my experience through the years of that study. So why did I decide to study psychology? Um, I guess in the most basic way, I understood psychology to, to be the study of human thinking, working, um, and pe working with people, sorry. And when I was back at school, we didn't have psychology as a subject. So I'm sure there's many of you in the audience that are, are, were far better placed than I was back when I was in high school to understand what psychology might be like. Um, my, in, my sense was that it suited my skill set. I was really good at English, at written and verbal communication, and I was pretty good at maths as well. And um, often it's a bit of a shock to students that um, maths is such a, in, not maths, statistics, are a really important part of, um, of psychology. So I think that often comes as a bit of a, a, bit of a shock or a real surprise. Um, for me, I was kind of like, oh, I know how to do this. So that was like a nice surprise. Um, I knew I wanted to work with people, but I, I really wasn't sure what my career would look like. And in the end, psychology just seemed like the right choice. And I think there was very much a kind of intuitive component to that. It just felt like a good place for me to start out. And I guess I was open to the fact um, that it may not be where I would end up, but it seemed like a really broad, um, great discipline to start off with. So I have been really pleasantly surprised. I've found that it's a field that has constantly engaged and challenged me. Um, it's really dynamic, multidimensional and multidisciplinary. So there's so many different areas and things you can study or learn about in psychology. Um, and it involves in practice, wherever you end up, it, it, it involves working with people with different backgrounds, whether they're your clients, whether they're your colleagues. Um, and I find that really, really exciting. I think that's one of the things that's kept me the most excited about psychology. Um, I really appreciate that it's scientifically rigorous. I really appreciate the scientific method and um, that we can, yeah, we can investigate things and learn to talk about um, things that sometimes seem abstract. We can learn to talk about them in a concrete way. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I, and I'd never really understood the opportunities that psychology would offer me, so I'm quite thankful that I trusted my intuition and ended up in this area. So now my conceptualization of psychology very broadly is an education in critical thinking, um, an education in how to be analytical and how to ask questions, um, to never take things on face value. And I think that's something you can sell widely to, employ to employers. Um, 
and the focus on research methodologies and, and inquiry. I think that's extremely valued to employers, extremely valuable to employers. Um, so as a student of psychology, I guess I see, I see the field of psychology as something that's um, set to grow. Um, WHO, the World Health Organisa Organization, estimate that by 2025, depression is going to be the biggest health problem facing the world. And certainly psychologists are well placed to have something to offer and to be able to innovate in that space to try to, I guess, lessen the burden of um, such a devastating condition such as depression and other things such as anxiety. Um, and I think still psychology as a profession and a field of study remains relatively um, under-acknowledged and misunderstood. I mean, the number, the number of times that people have asked me um, if I can read their mind or if I'm a psych you know, I can prescribe them drugs or I'm a psychiatrist, I mean, that in itself communicates to me that, that we're a field that's still, you know, developing our identity and trying to communicate that to the world and to our colleagues. Um, and so now I see myself as an ambassador and an advocate for not only the field, but for also um, for clients and for mental health causes. I think there's something that, um, that, that I can be doing in my work to help people understand what psychology is and what, the, what it can offer widely in society. Um, so we, what, it was, what was it like to be a combined degree student? Um, I'm, 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 sp I'm focusing on what it was like to be a postgrad student, but I think a lot of these comments um, apply to what it's like in the undergraduate experience as well. So certainly I've always found the content um, of psychology very engaging. It has kept my interest um, and I think that says something um, to, you know, to be studying something for 10 years plus and to still be interested is a great thing. Um, I've always felt really supported. Um, I felt mentored and I've had really great supervisors um, throughout my studies, so at the honours level and um, at the PhD level. Um, I felt challenged, and whether that is in content or in skills or in time management, um, I, think, I think to know now that I was able to manage doing um, two degrees at the same time and working and to know and having a social life and having a partner, um, to know that I could do that um, is something that I think I can sell widely. I mean, time management and work-life balance are so important, and I managed to do it. Um, Self-directed, I think that's super important. I think through, an un through undergrad, um, you're exposed to lots of topics. By the time you get to honours, you have the opportunity to be pursuing your research interests, to be di driving a research project yourself. Um, for me, by the time I got to my PhD, I was able to, yeah, to really be exploring things that were of great um, personal interest to me. Um, and flexible. So to be able to combine studies with international travel and employment has been so important to me and it's been one of the ways that I feel that I've um, been able to get myself job ready. So um, I guess when I, when I started my studies and the further I went on, I certainly was concerned that I was becoming you know, somewhat institutionalized. I was just studying years and years of study and I was really concerned about not actually having work experience. So I want to tell you about some of the work experience things that I've done over the years um, yeah, to get myself to a point where I, I think I can sell my skills to prospective employers. Um, so, in my opinion, university life is what you make of it. Um, there's so many opportunities um, that can come your way, but you have to be ready and willing to pursue them. So, for me, uh, being a student in the School of Psychology has given me skills and confidence to do a lot of things. So, the first thing I want to talk about, um, I, you know, I was studying psychology, but I didn't have a great sense of, you know, could I actually be a psychologist? Um, do I have the skills to engage people of all different backgrounds? You know, could I just sit down and talk to someone? Um, so one of the things I did was um, I became a volunteer um, in a, um, through a program called LifeLinks through Unley Council, and I was a volunteer there for five years, and um, every couple of weeks I went with a group and we visited um, people with intellectual disabilities and psychiatric conditions living in supported residential facilities, so like living in a hostel. And um, yeah, and we went there and we played games and we went on bus trips. Um, and yeah, it was, it was one of the things, one of the ways I learned about myself and thought, 
yeah, like maybe I could be a psychologist. It's one of the experiences that led me to pursue doing the Masters in Clinical Psychology. Another thing that I did during the years of my studies um, was that I did um, IQ assessments. So IQ, um, measuring IQ and understanding IQ is kind of one of the, one of the kind of core learnings, I think, um, in masters. It's, it's kind of sometimes the language of psychology in certain settings. And so um, I started working on a clinical trial at the Women's and Children's Hospital in, an, in obstetrics and gynecology. And um, I con conducted over 200 assessments of seven and eight-year-olds. Um, and I traveled all around Australia to do that. So I was in Queensland, in Tasmania, in New South Wales, in the Northern Territory, um, meeting children in their families and, and sitting down and doing an IQ test with, with these kids. And that was an incredible experience um, and yeah, amazing people, great. It was just really incredible. And to work in obstetrics and gynecology um, in clinical trials um, and yeah, and to have a skill set that I could sell so readily to that group was really important. Um, so back when I had just started my PhD, I made the very bold move of um, applying for the Rhodes Scholarship. And if anyone's ever heard of the Rhodes Scholarship, it's pretty much um, the most prestigious scholarship in the world. And I still think I had a real, real um, goal thinking that I could apply for the Rhodes Scholarship, but, but I did it. And I, I didn't, I wasn't awarded the scholarship, but it really enlivened something in me and started making me think about international experience. Um, and so I self-funded um, with um, some support from the university and some other funding bodies, but mainly self-funded. And, um, and I went to Harvard School of Public Health in Boston for eight months. So, and again, I could sell my skills in IQ assessment. So I went there and I worked on a, a, another trial about ambient air pollution. Um, and I assessed the IQ of um, three and four year old kids in Boston, all over Boston. So I traveled actually all over um, Massachusetts um, doing IQ tests. And um, yeah, an, an extremely decisive experience for me to be in another university, um, to be meeting amazing colleagues. Um, the two gentlemen that I'm um, pictured with, one is um, the former head of um, ethics at WHO, the World Health Organization. And the other one, Robert Cash, is the um, pioneer of, um, oh, escapes my mind what it's called, but um, cholera treatment. And he alone has saved the lives of 55 million people. I mean, amazing, amazing to meet these people and be inspired by them. And I think that's, that's I guess, one of the messages um, that I would like to communicate to you is, is the opportunity of, of international travel and experience. And certainly um, I waited to be a postgrad to do that, but there's so many opportunities within the university um, to do that as an undergrad. Um, universities have networks, um, they have connections, um, people in different faculties have colleagues, and, um, and you can spend time abroad, um, experience another city, another culture, another university, and yeah, and learn. So that, I mean, that's one of the coolest things I've done. Um, and off, off the back of that, um, I ended up in the same year going to the World Health Organization. So I went over to Geneva where I was an intern in the Department of Food Safety and Zoonoses of all things. Totally random, but awesome. So I was, yeah, I was an intern there for four months. And um, amazingly, the skill that WHO was most interested in that I had was um, skills in editing. So I went over there and I was what's called a technical rapporteur. So I went to official meetings and I um, took official meetings, uh, meeting minutes. So I ended up writing this report, which you can't quite see, but it's, um, it's the initiative that I was working on, the initiative to estimate the global burden of foodborne disease. And so I wrote this report and I was able to, I guess, put a bit of myself in it. I'm a massive cat lover, so a cat in a fridge is a pretty serious food safety issue. So, um, so I was able to source that and write this document. And, and yeah, it, I mean, it enlivened my interest in public health. WHO is the specialised agency for health in the UN. And... Um, 
and they're one of the biggest voices of, in public health in the world. So suddenly my interest in psychology, you know, if we, if we were going back to Deb's circle of, of the different interests, suddenly my interest in psychology is about psychology and public health. And it always was, but I didn't know the words for it, and I didn't know there was an area called public health. Um, and suddenly the intersection of psychology and public health is where I see um, my future. So what I'm doing now, so after I graduated, um, uh, I, I spent some time at Families SA, which is the State Child Protection Agency, where I was assessing children and providing recommendations about their care. Um, one of the reasons I did that work was I wanted to get a taste of what it's like to be a psychologist, certainly. Um, the organisation op offer um, great supervision to students or to new graduates, and I saw um, child protection as part of the spectrum of, of work in public health and psychology, so that definitely led me there. I also pursued um, a job in public health and clinical coordination at SA Health, where I've been the managing editor of the Public Health Bulletin, and I've been working on the rollout of the new public health legislation. Um, and, and I found myself being valued greatly for my expertise, or my expertise, that's, that's definitely a step, but um, my experience in, um, in data analysis and working with data sets. Um, so these positions have represented to me the desire to work across clinical practice and public health. And I've really valued working in government. It's, it's um, an area where so many psychology graduates end up working and to learn how bureaucracies work, to learn about the influence of politics on the direction of departments and their core business, uh, for politics to really come alive for me working there. Um, and really nerdily, you know, suddenly there's a whole new landscape of like pseudo celebrities. So like the ministers and the chief executives and the advisors. So it just like has really brought government and politics alive for me. Um, and I've continued um, doing some tutoring and lecturing in the School of Psychology. Um, I'm supervising an honours student and I do, um, we have an online, online mentoring for first year students, so I've done that for the last few years as well. Um, a couple of years ago, a really great opportunity came my way. Um, a, a, an outstanding program in government called Adelaide Thinkers in Residence um, was bringing one of the biggest names in psychology to South Australia. So that's Professor Martin Seligman, and you may have heard of him, and you'll likely hear about him in further studies in psychology. So, so yeah, the government brought Martin to Adelaide to think about um, how to increase the well-being and resilience of our population. And to me, this was, this was a great marriage of psychology and public health again, and um, a project supported by the University of Adelaide and also by um, various government departments, including the organisations where I was working, Families SA and SA Health. So I was involved in that work for a couple of years, and um, we worked really intensely on a um, you know, statewide strategy for wellbeing. Um, and in a nutshell, the, the area of psychology that Martin works in is positive psychology. And positive psychology is um, an area that takes a slightly different perspective than um, psychology in general. It, it seeks to be looking at what's going well for people, to research and study that and seek to enhance what's going well for people. So it's been like a very, um, I don't know, very p personally enriching area to be involved in and certainly changed my perspective of um, how I've approached things in my own life, but how I would approach um, different opportunities into the future. So this, this, being involved in this project has actually led me back to the university. So I'm actually working at the university now, back in psychology. It's kind of like coming home, although I never really left. And what's, so that's pretty much like my um, domestic situation as well. Um, so, and, um, and I've been working with Deb and um, my colleague, um, Dr. Anthony Venning and Professor John Dunn um, to look at um, developing some new programs in psychology. So now I'm, I guess, in a space where I'm seeing a different side of the university, learning about how um, a big machine like this university works, um, learning about the strategic vision for this university. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been very exciting. Okay, and I guess I'm, I'm still getting excited about research. Um, I'm really excited about learning about what's going well for adolescents, for, you know, to measure and try to enhance that. 
I'm really excited about big data, bringing together data sets that governments and other organisations own, you know, joining the dots, bringing those um, data sets together and asking questions that we maybe wouldn't normally be able to ask in, in psychology. Um, and getting data from unexpected sources. So there's lots of great initiatives that are pulling data from Twitter and Facebook and being able to, um, I guess, link, link that data to where people live. And that's really exciting and, instruct exciting and instructive. Um, and yeah, I'm really interested in opportunities through technology, the use of apps to measure and increase people's well-being. I'm really interested in creativity. Um, I've reconnected with the fact that, oh, maybe I'm actually a creative person. I feel like I've been very kind of um, focused on the scientific method that I have a creative streak and I'm interested in um, something that's a bit out there called, which I'm calling positive fashion. So um, reflecting on, I guess, the industry of fashion and redirecting how, how can fashion make people's lives better? Um, how can we move away from capitalism in the fashion industry? Um, and I'm always really interested in collaboration and we've had some great opportunities through recent work at, um, at the University of Adelaide to collaborate with University of Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah, I love the idea of collaboration. So what I've learned, I've definitely learned what my strengths are and I guess um, as prospective students I would certainly invite you to, to think about what your strengths are, um, to articulate them, to discuss them with your family and friends and to, you know, to help them inform what you might end up doing, what your career path might be. Um, I've been challenged like, n like never before. Um, certainly what I've learned is the importance of self-care, of having um, strategies to manage your stress levels and, and I would certainly leave that with you as well as, as a lot of you are entering you know, year 12 exam period, some of you um, uh, looking at year 12, you know, from earlier years. Um, Self-care is super important I've, and I've, I've learnt that over the years of my study. Um, building visions for the future and prospecting the future is so exciting and so energising. So I would certainly be inviting you all to do that. Um, and I feel like I'm more collaborative than ever and I've realised that I, I really need a team. I need to work in a team environment. Um, and a diverse one. I've, I've reflecting, I found that I've been, you know, I've worked with epidemiologists, doctors, statisticians, social workers, scientists, engineers, computer programs, computer programmers, teachers, um, public servants, and and I think that's enriching, and I value it deeply. Um, into the future, I hope to continue working at the intersection of psych and public health. Um, I'd like to start some research initiatives. Um, I'd like to do a master's in public health. I'd like more study. It's probably unbelievable at this point, but I'd love to be studying more. Um, I'd like to upskill in French. I think languages are valued so greatly um, on the international scene. Um, I would encourage any of you who, yeah, who are open to languages to give that a go in your university program. Um, I'd like to gain experience in a developing country. Um, and I guess I'd work, like to work at um, public health governance at a local and international level. And always, always, I, I want to work to advance the position and profile of psychology. So, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, Deb and I are going to hang around for a few minutes if we have any time left before the end of this session. And we're also um, both going to be down at the Bar Smith Lawns for a bit this afternoon. We have a great stand down there with some different experiments. You can get a taste of psychology, so I'd invite you to go down there. And I also just want to plug another event um, that's happening at the university. You're an open day, but um, there's plans for open night. Um, so a great opportunity to experience, I guess, the, the atmosphere of the North Terrace precinct um, and, yeah, to come and hang out in the university. So thanks very much.